Hello, and welcome to the first of the final set of FMSP Core Prerequisites videos. These videos are designed to help you get ahead with independent study of the A2 core, ready to develop the skills in A2 Further Pure modules. This topic is independent of everything in A2 core, so you can start it as soon as you have completed AS. You'll need all of these things to hand, so pause the recording now and go and get everything together. Make sure you have set aside enough time to do the questions, as well as watch the video. This is what we'll be covering in this video. Much of it will be familiar from work at GCSE and in mechanics, but it's worth just checking all the details. I'm sure you remember what a vector is. It's something with both size and direction. And the standard examples to help you remember the difference, speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. We usually describe a vector in component form. So here is a vector with a size and a direction. And it's three units along and two units up. And we'll write it as a column vector, three, two. Or if it's going the other way, so two units down and then three units to the left, that would be minus three along and minus two in the vertical direction. It doesn't matter whether you use square or round brackets, it's just a matter of whichever you think looks neater, and that will depend on your handwriting. Instead of writing a column vector, we can use i and j components, and k as well if we're in 3D. i is just a unit vector in the x direction, and it's sometimes written with a little hat over it to show that it's a unit vector. J is a unit vector in the Y direction. The little hat emphasises that it's a unit vector, but this notation seems to be a bit old hat. I like it as it emphasises the fact that they're unit vectors. You'll come across it in A2 further pure, but not with I and J. So, the vector we had on the previous slide, 3, 2, we could say, well, that's three units in the I direction and two units in the J direction. You must remember to underline your vectors when you're writing them with um, handwriting. OK, what about three dimensions? Well, you need what's called a right-handed set. So your thumb is the I direction and your index finger pointing upwards is the J direction and then your third finger in that picture it might not be that clear is actually trying to come out of the page that's the K direction so we could write a 3D vector 2 1 minus 3 that's um, 2 along and 1 up and then 3 back into the page, we could write that as 2i plus j minus 3k. Adding and subtracting vectors is dead easy, we just add them component wise. So 3, 2 added to the vector 5, 1 is just the vector. 8, 3, and let's do a three-dimensional one, minus 3, 2, 1, take away minus 1, 3, minus 4, equals 3 take away minus 1 is minus 2, 2 take away 3 is minus 1, and 1 take away minus 4 is 5. Or we could write them using i's and j's. 5i minus 2j added to 3i minus 4j. And it's just like connect collecting terms. 5i and 3i is 8i minus 2j minus 4j minus 6j. And if we're subtracting, minus 2i 
minus 3j take away and always use brackets to make sure that you're taking away the whole vector minus 3i plus j minus 2i take away minus 3i is i and minus 3j take away j is minus 4j we can also multiply vectors by scalars we want to make it three times as big, then we just multiply each component by three. So I've got the vector two, three. That's two along and three up. I make it three times as big. That's going to be six along and nine up. So three times that is just six, nine. When we want to give a name to a vector, we usually use small letters, we use bold type in print, and we underline it in handwriting. Alternatively, if the vector takes you from a point A to a point B, we might write it as the vector AB with an arrow to show that we're going from A to B. We can use vectors to solve problems, and sometimes a geometric problem suddenly becomes really easy when you use vectors. Try this. On a piece of paper, using a ruler, draw a quadrilateral, any old quadrilateral, not a square. Mark the midpoint of each side. You can probably do that by eye. And then join the midpoints to form a new quadrilateral. What shape is your new quadrilateral? Pause the video and have another go starting with a very different quadrilateral. Well, what did you get? You should have got a parallelogram every time, which is quite surprising. Let's see why this happens. We can prove it using vectors. Here is a random quadrilateral. I've called it A, B, C, D. And I'm going to define some vectors. So I'm going to define these three basic vectors to define my quadrilateral. D to A, I'm going to call small a. D to B, I'm going to call small b. And D to C, I'm going to call small c. OK. Now, to prove that this quadrilateral MNPQ is a quadrilateral. I need to prove that MQ and NP are both parallel and equal. And I also need to prove that both PQ and NM are parallel and equal. So I'm going to start by trying to find QM. Well, QM, to get from Q to M, I could go from Q to A and then from A to M. So I need to find QA. Well, QA is half of DA, and that was small a. So that's half A. To find AM, I'm going to need AB to start with. AB is going from A to D, and then from D to B, and that's a to D is minus A plus B. AM is half of that, so that is a half, and I'll swap them around to have the positive one first, a half B minus A. Right, now I've got the bits I need. So QA is a half A plus AM a half of B minus A, and that is a half B. OK, I also need PN. And PN is PC plus CN. So let's work those two out. PC is just a half of C. CB is CD plus db, and that is minus c plus b, and therefore cn is a half of b minus c. 
So Pn is Pc, which is a half C, plus a half B minus C. And that's a half B as well. So Qm and Pn are parallel and equal. Now I need to do the same with PQ and NM. So I haven't really left enough room. We'll have to squash it up top left. OK. PQ is PD plus DQ. PD is a half of DC but backwards. So that's minus a half C and DQ is a half A plus a half A. NM is NB plus BM. NB we found before I'm sure we found it before. Oh, we found CB before. So it's half of CB. So that's a half of B minus C. And um, BM is a half of BA. And that's a half A minus B. And that comes out to be minus a half C plus a half A as well. So, down the bottom right again, PQ and NM are equal and parallel. So, MNPQ is a parallelogram. It wasn't a coincidence, it always happens, any quadrilateral. OK, here are a few questions for you to practice these skills. Pause the video and have a go at this one. OK, the first thing you need to do is label your parallelogram. It doesn't matter where you start or which way round you go, but you must make sure you go all the way round. So W X, Y, Z. Make sure that you can do a path round in order. WX we're told is A, so we'll mark that on. And XY is B, so we'll mark that on. The point P is two thirds of the way along the diagonal XZ. It'll help if you try and do that with a ruler. So P is about there. And we're asked to find the vector P, sorry, YP. So from there to there. So to get from Y to P, I think the easiest thing to do is to do Y to X and then X to P. So Y to X is minus B. X to P is two-thirds of the way along x, z. And x, z is minus a plus b. So now collecting our terms, we get minus two-thirds a minus one-third b. And that's option a. Here's another question for you. Pause the video again and have a go at this. Right, here we go. We've got A and B with those coordinates. So let's start by uh, saying the vector from O to A, O being the origin, is minus 2, 3. And the vector from O to B is 2, minus 5. To get the vector AB, I need to go from A to O, 
and then from O to B. And that's the vector OB minus the vector OA, which gives me 2 take away minus 2 is 4, and 5 minus 5 take away 3 is minus 8. An alternative way of thinking about this is to think, well, OK, I'm going from 2, 3 to 2, minus 5. And to get there, I need to do plus 4, and then from 3 to minus 5 is going to be minus 8. So you can do that informally as well. Either way, I've got the vector 4i minus 8j, which is b. Notice that although the question was in terms of i and j, I prefer to work in column vectors. It always seems to me to be less writing. You can work whichever way you prefer, but do make sure that you give your answer in the same form as the question. One last one for you to have a go at. Pause the video again and try this one. OK, I've got 2a minus b plus 3 lots of c. So that's 2 lots of... Right, a is 5 minus 2, and you'll see I'm working in column vectors again. Minus b, minus 3, 4. Plus 3 lots of c, which is 0, 5. So that's 2 lots of... 5 take away minus 3 is 8. Minus 2 take away 4 is minus 6. Plus 3 lots of 0, 5, which is 0, 15. So that's 16 minus 12, take away 0, 15, and that is 16. I seem to have lost a sign. Oh, so it should be add. 16 minus 12, add 15, is 3. So that's 16, 3, which is 16i plus 3j and that is option D. OK, what next? Some consolidation work. Don't miss it out, it's important. You've got to do it sometime, and now is the best time, before you watch the next video. I hope you found this video useful. The next one continues with vectors, and looks at magnitude and unit vectors. Goodbye.